only uh, motivation or only connection uh, for you the to The early connection with music yes. as such arises from an insight that I got from the very earliest work that I did in biology. My first work as my PhD thesis was to use experimental information on two proteins in the heart, the channel proteins as we call them, to understand the process of the rhythm of the heart. And what I did was to build a mathematical model. And what I realized from that is that the model is a process. It's how best to put it. If you ask the question, where is the rhythm of the heart? Yeah. Well, of course, there's an obvious answer in one sense. You can feel it bump, bump, bump inside yeah. you. Yeah. But that is a process. It isn't the molecules themselves. It is the process that those molecules enable to happen. Yeah. And I therefore thought the best way of answering reductionist views like the selfish gene, yeah. genes created as body and mind, yeah. uh, which I think is just wrong. Yeah. Um, instead of that, I said, well, no, it's the processes that actually control the molecules. Yeah. I've got the standard biology has got causation the wrong way round. Yeah. It is what the organism as a whole does to constrain the molecules, yeah. which generates the process. If there was no life, there wouldn't be the process. True. So, in a sense, it's it's good old process philosophy, rather than thing philosophy. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the way to put it. Yeah. Now, that was the connection with music in relation to my own thinking. Yeah. But actually, becoming a musician of yeah. kind yeah. myself was a very late development. Yeah. It arose in connection with discovering the Occitan language right. in the south of France. Because about 50 years ago, when yeah. I was, well, probably about 35, I think. Yeah. Anyway, about 50 years ago, yeah. I bought an old ruin, a house in the far south of France. Yeah. Happens, by chance, to be very near the town, Ribérac, where Arthur Daniel, the greatest of the Occitan troubadours, yeah. was born, and oh. where he composed his grand sestino. Wow. Mm. The great sense that enters into my heart. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. he's expressing himself yeah. in that kind of way. Now, when I discovered that, mm -hmm. I thought, my goodness, there's a different language here. I already spoke French. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea there was yet another language. Yeah, and, and then, then the, the language that the Nobel Prize already to Mistral. Uh, exactly, yeah, through yeah. Uh, Mistral's yeah. Mireille, Mistral. exactly yeah. so. Yeah. So it has a very distinguished past True. in culture. Yeah. And even in medieval times, which is when Arthur Daniel flourished, he, mm. he flourished about 1180, so yeah. something yeah. like 800 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Now, um, he was so admired by the great Italian poet coming about a hundred years later, Dante Alighieri, yeah. who wrote the Divine Comedy, Divine Comedy yes. that Dante describes Arno Daniel as il milio fabro in a natural language, as the best... Wow, Dante... Dante himself, himself describes Arno Daniel as wow. il milio fabro, the best uh, artist, artist in a maternal language. Now. Better than that, mm -hmm. in Canto 26 of the mm -hmm. Purgatorio, mm -hmm. which is the second uh, mm -hmm. of the three books that form the Divine Comedy, uh, he makes Arno speak. He puts Arno in purgatory because he loved a woman. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, that's... <laughs> yes, okay. Well, that's a particularly yeah. uh, very poor Christian concept of yeah. love, of course. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's somehow forbidden. Anyway, that's why Arno is in purgatory. But Canto 26 has two to three verses written not in Italian. Yeah. He wrote it in Occitan. Because yeah. he makes Arnau speak his own language. Aro vu pre per quello valor che vu guido al som de l'escalino, souvenir vu a tem de madurur. Please, as you ascend the stairway to paradise, mm -hmm. 
remember in time my pain. Of course, he's been, he's in purgatory in wow. order to yeah. uh, sort of cleanse himself. So who, whose line this is? This, Dante. That's Dante. Dante. Dante wrote that. And is, is that the part of Divine Comedy? It's Divine Comedy? Is exactly. It's the only part of the Divine Comedy that is not written in Italian. And that's from Occitan? It's Occitan. It's pure Occitan. Wow. Absolutely so. Like, wow. But look, it gets even better. Yeah. I did a recording. I can yeah. send you the link to it. Yeah, please do. Um, yeah. I did a recording recently. It's only just come out in, yeah. in the south of France for Occitan television. They, they, they do television in Occitan. Right. And I was asked whether I would sing the Sestino, which yeah. we're going to do at the concert next yeah. week. Yeah. Um, I was asked whether I would sing it in the remains of the Chateau of Ribrac, where he was born. Absolutely lovely honour. You know, there is a kind of chapel that is yeah. remains of the, of the Chateau. The rest of the Chateau is gone. Um, so I did that. I, I sang it a cappella, and then I explained Dante's admiration. And their next question was, how deep was that? It was absolutely wow. fundamental. Dante copies Arnaud Daniel. His rhyming sequence is that the rhyme of the last line of one verse mm -hmm. is also the rhyme word for the next verse, first line. Mm -hmm. And that's repeated all the way through the massive Divino Commedio. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is Arnaud's trick. I read Divine Comedy at least three or four times, but I missed right. this information. You missed, well, that is, if you look at the rhyming, exactly. that is how it's mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. That is Arnaud's invention mm -hmm. to do that. He actually did it with six-line verses instead of um, three-line verses, but it's the same idea. Mm. But better than that, the Divine Comedy is based on a love story. Yeah. Beatrice, mm. is Beatrice is his missing lover. Miss, yes, yes. Exactly. he never... Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you find in Arthur Daniel, in the Sestino? He never consummates love with that. Oh. And only in paradise does he ascend with her. That is Dante. Oh. Or Dante is copying after uh -huh. Daniel. What could you invent as a better story than that? He yeah. says, Ken paradis nara double joy marmo. In paradise I will have double joy. And that is exactly Dante's concept of going up to paradise with Beatrice. Exactly, Beatrice, yes. So one th one thing uh, before we move further, yes. uh, uh, Dennis, could you because obviously this is a new name to me, and then such a phenomenal poet, even Dante himself was influenced by. Yes. Would you be able to spell that name, Armida? Yes, Arnau is A R N A U T. Arnau. Yeah. Arnau or yeah. Arnau. Arnau. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Daniel is like Daniel is, in, Daniel is easy. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yes, that's yes, right. Yes. Yeah, you could say it's Arnold Daniel, Daniel yeah. in modern English. It, uh, almost yes. like Matthew Arnold and yes, exactly Arnold, so, yeah. exactly that. Yeah, yes, yeah. but mm. obviously in 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 yeah, his language Arnold, it Arnold. was spelt and pronounced Arnau. And it, yes. have those poems been uh, translated in English? Oh yes, yes, yes indeed. I've got my own translation, of course. We, and did well, you, did well, that's you, in that's in the mu the program for the we're concert doing. we're and doing. And have those been published anywhere? Oh yes, there's a lot published on Arthur Daniel. And if if I would like to have, I mean, if anyone would like to explore more about this poem. Oh, poem? huge studies on in, Arthur Daniel. And yes, in English. Uh, in English, right. yes, yeah. and in French, and in German, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure in Japanese yeah. too. Yeah. Now, now, he's been well studied as essentially the originator of poetry in the maternal language. What he did, you see, was, and, and the other troubadours at that time, they did not write in Latin. Mm -hmm. At that time, any educated person would write in Latin, mm -hmm. and you would get the Gregorian chant in the churches, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they were using, to some extent, the melodies of chant. Mm -hmm. you, you can see that in the, in, mm -hmm. the, in the music. But they were doing it in a much freer way because they were expressing the deep mm -hmm. feelings of people. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, that's why. Well, I came across with um, those troubadours through Apollonaire. 
I'm not sure. Uh, yes, familiar. indeed. He's yes. a great poet and great painter. Yes. And he mentioned about. Yes, First, I mean about yes, uh, perhaps 22 or 25 years ago. Yes. So that's how I knew about Trobadour. Yes. And then we did some concert of Trobadour yes. with Indian classical music because the right. ethos of love almost same. It's almost the same. And yes. especially the Vaishnavism. Yes. Uh, that is also a medieval philosophy yes. inherited uh, from uh, Hindology, Indo I mean uh, yes. Hindu mythology. Sure. And uh, in medieval times, perhaps about Vidyapati, Chandidas, they wrote many Sri Krishna Kirtan. Right. Radha as a creature, yeah. and Krishna is the god. The Jita, yeah, yes. yeah. And yes. the submission Radha is paying to Krishna. Yes. I mean, this 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 has also two meanings. So one is spiritual, and one is also you can see that as an extramarital affair. Uh, yes, some uh, the ladies. Yes, you know. Uh, yes, well, you, you can do that even with the. the Trubadur. The, the, yes. Well, well, I was going to say you can do it also in another spiritual tradition, which yes. is the tradition of the Bible. Yeah. In um, Jewish uh, and in uh, Christianity and, in, in, in Islam to some degree. Yeah, yeah. Because the Song of Songs can have the two interpretations. The Song of Songs in the Old Testament. The Song of Solomon. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, it can be interpreted as a fantastic but love poem for a particular person, exactly. and it can also be interpreted as, as this relationship to what is divine. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, great, great. Yes. So that's how you developed uh, uh, a huge interest in. Well, Trouble. actually, what I did it, the, the the interest in singing it and taking part in it came through attending some of the evenings, informal evenings often, in village halls and so on, um, where they, the people who sang in Occitan were presenting their poems, their songs and so on. Very rarely the medieval troubadours. Yeah. They largely presented modern songs. Um, so uh, have those been evolved? Uh, from in, in a sense, in yes. A sense, they, like, okay. you, you can see, for example, Se Canto, which is a very famous song. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a, a little folk song, really. It's not a great troubadour poem no, at yeah, all. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's, it's fairly simple. Yeah. It's almost nursery rhyme quality. Yes. So, yes. now that was, was written, we think, somewhere around the 14th century. So a little bit after the troubadours. They flourished from the 12th to the 13th and in partly into the 14th century. So it comes after the troubadours. Yeah. Um, that's more the style in which the modern Occitan singers uh, are writing. They're writing fairly simple poetry, not this sort of grand achievement on the mm -hmm. scale of the Divine Comedy or the Sestino. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more to down to earth mm -hmm. to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And I think they did that deliberately because they did not want to represent Occitan mm. culture as, mm. oh, just a dead language, yeah, yeah. which is what many people in England think it is, a dead language, no yeah, longer spoken. Yeah, yeah, dying language or something like that. So, what, I mean, uh, how did you, because obviously your work, to me now, although it can be classed as a work of biology, but uh, this is purely a work of philosophy. Yes. Uh, yes. You connected biological things with the deeper, deeper and exactly profound so, philosophical... Exactly so, because in the end, biology has to connect with philosophy. Philosophy, yes, yes. There is no answer to the question, what is life, exactly. in terms just of molecules. Yeah, yeah. It's very simple. It is yeah. a process. Yeah. And then you've got to ask the question, well, how does that process arise? What is its origin? Where is it going? Yeah. Does it have any purpose? Yeah. Now, modern biology tends largely to ignore all that and say, well, it's got no purpose, it's just a bunch of molecules. Yeah. Um, the, the great um, biologist, uh, James Watson, who mm. with uh, Francis yeah. Crick yeah. sequenced, the, yeah. not sequenced, but Genes, determined yeah. the structure of structure DNA, the helix, the double, double helix. helix yeah. That's right. But he used to always say, it's all molecules, the rest is sociology. And my reply was to Jim was to say, look, um, it's trivially true that all is molecules. 
It's also obviously true that the rest is sociology because of the interaction of those molecules. Yeah. It's the yeah. process of interaction. So you're absolutely right, but not in the way you thought. Yeah. yeah but, uh, well, another thing that I, well, because you mentioned about uh, Watson, uh, he claimed that he got this model in, in his dream or something like that. Yes. Did you? Did you? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. So that's one right. thing, one thing also, I, I mean, because obviously you have such a profound interest in Troubadour and you sing and you, I yes. can see the connection you have. Yes. Whenever you uh, sing this. The immediate uh, emotional connection oh, the uh, is, emotion is visible is everything. in your face. Exactly. Absolutely, exactly. it is everything. So and even when you sing one of the simpler songs, like mm -hmm. I Go de la Dodogno, which is mm -hmm. one of the modern ones, mm -hmm. done, as I say, in a very simple, mm -hmm. almost nursery rhyme, mm -hmm. what it's saying is, you know, I went down to the river, uh, the, through the, the, uh, the meadow of a neighbour, I put my feet in the water, my head in the air, oh, did it feel good. Now, you could say this to a child, you know, would you like mm -hmm. to go down to the river, put your feet in the water, enjoy the air and so on. Um, it, it's almost child music, mm -hmm. but it is also profound. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. saying that river is the source of life. Exactly. How and what does he say at the end of the poem, the end of the song? Poor Dordogne, they're going to build a nuclear centre. <laughs> your source, <laughs> end, of, end of the source of life. You see, so it's a profound view, mm -hmm. the, the river of life. It's, it's a lovely metaphor. Yeah, so did so, you, whenever you explored uh, or sort of you started uh, having a journey in exploring the beauty of those metaphors, and especially the love. Uh, Trobadur's yes. main theme is love. It was love, yes. But, Fina more, but yes. not in a shallow way. Love no, no, goes never. deeper and deeper and never, deeper and deeper. No. They were uh, not interested in the mechanics. Exactly. No. Exactly. Their uh, interest was in the emotions yeah. and the soul of a person. Transcendental. That yeah. is transcendent in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why they called it Fin Amour, meaning pure love. Pure love. It yeah. is. Um, Yes, of course, there is a, there is a mechanics to yes. how we make love, <laughs> yeah, obviously yeah. so. Yeah. But that is again to mistake <coughs> the print molecules with the message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The connection with another person mm -hmm. is a process. It's not what you can do with your body mm -hmm. in interaction with the other body. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course that happens, that's mm -hmm. natural. Mm -hmm. But that is an expression of the fact that you you feel so much for this person that you're prepared to do that. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. I think, the right way to put it. So when uh, you, what's your idea of love in that sense? Because you uh, w because you love Troubadour, and you are intrigued by the narrative of love in Troubadour as well, and also you have a very spiritual connection with Buddhism yes. as well. So. Yes. Uh, this is also about another form of love. Indeed so. And then yes. obviously the Vaishnavism, I'm not sure whether, uh, and that's it, uh, you, you are currently doing fusion with Vaishnavism and Baal, and yes. this is absolutely similar. Yes, uh, Some of those, if you read some of those translations, you would perhaps say, oh, this is Trovador. Yes. This is, is the part of Trovador. Exactly. Yes. It's, it's so exact, so, exactly. so near, right. and such yes. a great affinity. And sometimes you see whether you end up, you may end up with an impression. Oh, this is, this has some sort of connection or something like. That. So, uh, w I mean, if I just simplify my question, yes, uh, with your expanded a, a, a wider journey in Troubadour, Vaishnavism, uh, and you know, uh, especially Buddhism, yes, uh, and literature, philosophy. Uh, if you connect those things with your idea of love, what's your idea of love now? I think it is the essence of the question, who are you? Which wow. is, of course, the question that gets asked. Yes, Tagore uh, asked. Uh, yes, well. exactly. And, yeah. of course, when yeah. I spent this visit in South Korea to the mm. Buddhist temples, the head of the Jogi order, first question to me was, if I tell you that you can take your name away, you're no longer Dennis Noble, who are you? Yes. It's the same question, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Now, 
I think the answer is I am who I love. Now that's a funny way of putting it. No, this is. I think I am defined by who I have related to with that degree of depth. And if I try to ask the question, who am I if that didn't exist? I don't think I have any idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think in, in many ways, many of the religions of the world, I'm not a terribly religious person, you mm -hmm. have to understand mm -hmm. that. I, in one sense I am, I'm mm -hmm. deeply spiritual, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, because I think you have to approach mm -hmm. these yeah, yeah. things as mm -hmm. what we call the spirit, which is mm -hmm. the process again, mm -hmm. it is the activity, mm -hmm. not just the bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. um, but that idea, I think, is expressed time and again in the different religions of the world. Mm -hmm. God is love. Mm -hmm. I've no idea what God might be. <laughs> this is partly why I love one of the songs we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, Exactly, the Sheldonian, because mm -hmm. it's asking the question, where are you? Mm -hmm. You know, you're supposed to be everywhere. I can't see anything that, oh, come on, every time I approach you, you go away. So mm -hmm. It's a lovely song. Mm -hmm. I, the poetry in that is just superb. Mm -hmm. And you can see that also in the troubadours, they they flourished at a time when a very strange form of Christianity was flourishing in the south of mm -hmm. France, mm -hmm. called the Catars or the Albigensians. Mm -hmm. Those are the names that their enemies gave them. That was the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope, because they didn't like another Christian mm -hmm. form of religion mm -hmm. arising in their area. And they had, well, I've studied them to some degree. I don't, I don't go along with their analysis. Mm -hmm. They thought that the world was essentially fundamentally evil. Mm -hmm. And therefore, mm -hmm. it would be best to leave this world as soon as possible. When they were, when they were finally caught, the, the top echelons of the church in a big castle at the top of a big peak, they were subjected to siege. Mm -hmm. Montségur was the, the castle. <coughs> they chose to be burnt rather than to give way. Oh. Oh. There's a beautiful Occitan song about that. Cinq scenarios à Montségur. You were 600 at Montségur and we burnt you. And you chose. You chose to leave this world because you thought it was evil. Now, I, the, now we come back to the question you put to me. <coughs> What's going on here? What's the opposite of love? I think it is evil. Yeah. We're, we're now in that situation. We're back to Ukraine again, aren't we? Yeah. What is the evil of Ukraine? As I see it, the real evil of what is happening there is that Putin has absolutely no respect for these people. It'd be, it seems as though he'd be perfectly happy if the whole of Ukraine population just wiped out. He'd then <laughs> he'd come back to being pure Russia again. I mean, it is extraordinary. And why is he doing it? Historically, it is because Kiev is terribly important to them. The city, the capital city of Ukraine, is the center of their religion. Oh. You see, they see that the... the the uh, buildings and the religious or